Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a very high level game of Starcraft 2. Perhaps even the highest level game of Starcraft 2. As here we have Hero in the top left of Grassland spawning as our blue Protoss player. And in the bottom right, in the red colors, playing for the Shopify Rebellion, it is Bion. Bam, bam, bam. Currently Hero, perhaps the greatest player. That is if you don't count Max Pack. But even if you do count Max Pack, maybe he is the greatest player. It's a little bit hard to say at times. You know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure who the greatest one is. I also feel like I'm a little bit biased. But then again, I have close relationship, close, bleh, close relations with, with both players. So Max Pack and I, we talk on a daily basis on Discord. I complain to him about me being bad. And he complains to me about, you know, other things. You know, Zerg, for example. I'm like, Max Pax, don't worry about it. You're the greatest player that has ever lived. Hero, on the other hand, the other day I sent him a message. Uh, I said, hey, Hero, we have to play. And he said, hey, friend, how are you? And he, he was the first one to really, you know, drop the F-bomb in that conversation. I, I, I feel like it's always a thing if someone, you know, addresses you as friend or as a friend. You know, that, that does show something. It's like they want to put the label on first. It's important for them. So I just, you know... It feels good to be wanted by someone like Hero in 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 a in a platonic way, obviously. Um, what in the world is Beyond doing? Did he forget that he has to build a CC with this build? No, he's just gonna build on the high ground. Went for a no scout. This is very odd. If you're Hero, you gotta be confused in this case, no? Like real confused as well. Okay, he's gonna go in and find it out. I completely understand why Hero went back with that pro because. There's a CC supposed to be going down at the low ground. It wasn't there. Then you see this dude trying to throw down a depot. It's like, well, that's that's kind of odd. So I think Bian was trying to fake some type of two-rex play. This is something he's done in the past, where there's a second barracks, like either hidden somewhere on the map or hidden in the main base. And then three Reapers show up in your main, or three Reapers show up over here, or three Reapers jump up here. And it can be very difficult to deal with as a Protoss player if you're not quite expecting it. So I completely understand why Hero said, hey, I'm going to send my probe in your main base and uh, I could lose it, but instead I'm just going to recall it. Shreeper does, does get spotted. Okay, Bian now needs to piss off. He's a little bit too slow there. He needs to be so, so careful, but is going to jump down, move towards the right side, and as a result gets to uh, escape this Reaper. Triple CC? What? Okay, this is a very old school build. And when I say very old school, I mean, this is the type of build Terrans were playing at the very start of Legacy of the Void. They open up with a Reaper, um, I think back then it was Reaper into Reactor. Get a command center. Factory, Cyclone, Triple CC. This is this is a tale as old as time. It really is. It is it is build order. I haven't seen this played in quite a while. Nowadays there's builds that are considered better, that have a little bit more aggression, or builds that are just greedier. So when it comes to more aggression, you could you could play different. When it comes to playing more greedier, you could get a faster CC before. You know, your second production structure. Um, that's not the case at all here. We have double gas as well. Is he going to throw down a starboard here or a second factory or something? No, it is just going to be a battery. This cyclone has now popped out. And the one task of this cyclone is to deny scouting to make sure that that phoenix doesn't see the second CC. Because the moment the phoenix spots the second command center, a third nexus will go down immediately. But until that gets scouted... Hero needs to be very afraid because he saw a cyclone. So, cyclone, what does that usually mean? Cyclones usually mean some type of aggression or heavy defense. Now, a second cyclone... Uh-oh, uh-oh, cyclone needs to move in position here. Needs to deny the scout beyond. This is important. Hero does get the scout here, but it's kind of a weird scout because he doesn't see a whole lot. He doesn't get the confirmation on the third CC. I think he, he shoots somewhat no, right? Like... It, you see a single barracks and, and a factory. Like, what else could it truly be? I don't know. Two cyclones are out. Doesn't seem like Hero is aware of it, though. He's afraid. He's like, wait, this looks weird. He's looking, perhaps, for a proxy star. That's what he's doing. He's looking for a proxy starport. He thinks something is being proxied. A medevac, a liberator, whatever it's going to be. So he's looking around. Chrono boosting out two immortals. This is so expensive. 
usually against triple CC builders, you want to cancel all of your Immortals or not build them because Immortals cost a lot of minerals and they delay your third Nexus. And against the third CC, you want to get a third Nexus as quickly as possible. You get Immortals for safety, not because you're being greedy. Like these Immortals, they can't really do very much in the next two minutes. They can't walk across the map, start start beating up this bunker. You know, that's not it's not a realistic thing to want here as hero. The first time they're truly going to be useful is in the is when a stim combat shield timing is going to hit. Five barracks are going down. We have an eBay researching plus one as well. This seems like, like a very specific build here out of Beyond, who right now is 46 workers against 46. This is a good sign usually for Terran. Terran also already has very good infrastructure. So yes, supply right now is behind. It's like, oh, this looks great for Toss Harsh. No matter you're talking about, he said Hero didn't scout and he didn't get info. No, he didn't. And as a result, he has high supply right now, but that means because he's cutting infrastructure. There's no forge, there's no twilight, there's no extra gateways. We have two gateways total. Think of all the money that still needs to be spent in things that aren't units, that things that things that will not uh, garner supply. And then think of the same thing in Beyond. Beyond already has the three base full on setup. Like he has the five barracks, he has the starport, has the factory. Single eBay, could have been a second eBay there perhaps, but we're gonna see it soon anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. Has a good eco, so I think when, when we're maybe seven minutes and 30 seconds into the game, that's when we'll see Beyond probably starting to pull ahead a little bit in that supply. And then it's going to keep on rising because at this point, the first push hasn't arrived yet. It's really risky for Protoss to add infrastructure or to add a lot of infrastructure when that first push hasn't arrived yet. You want to kind of judge after that first push. Um, it's like, hey, what do I want to do? Before that, you just want to produce as many units as possible. But it means you're pushing that infrastructure further and further away. And with your income rising this infrastructure isn't going to be good enough. So right now, money is low, but soon money is going to be high and gateways will need to be added. Otherwise, you simply cannot spend your money. And that period has hit right now. So this is indeed the timing where Beyond will overtake Hero and Hero will need to start throwing down gateways. Now, a Ford Nexus, is that a possibility pre-gateway? I... maybe? It's not something I'd usually recommend, although there is a high Phoenix count. So it could technically be possible. With high Phoenix counts, it's often easier to defend multiple locations. If you play the lower Phoenix count, it tends to be a bit harder. But yeah, here we go with the extra gateways now being added in. We have Blink as the first upgrade. This is really rare with Phoenixes. Because Blink is, is, is catch. Just like a Phoenix is catch, right? Phoenix and Blink, they can kill units in dead space. They can deny units from going in towards your main base. So they serve a similar purpose. Hero playing a very passive game as of now, as we see Beyond indeed pulling ahead by a pretty decent amount supply-wise. Also tech-wise, he's looking very solid. Uh, he's getting that fourth base right now faster than his opponent once again. And here, all the gateways are being thrown down for Hero. And I wonder what Beyond is maximizing for. It feels like he's maximizing for a three ghost push with a couple of tanks. Uh, legit, just, oh, actually not just a couple of tanks, a triplet of tanks here gonna start moving across the map and while moving out across the map maybe start the 2-1 upgrades as well i kind of like that yeah this is going to be a real powerful timing attack sends out a triple drop as well has cyclones in it no just lift it up now pisses off again doesn't go for it okay maybe he's just playing a very passive game here wow beyond actually just sitting back doing nothing this is not the beyond that i'm used to whatsoever i I'm kind of surprised by this. I really am kind of surprised by this. Fort CC has lifted as we have a 50 C immediately going down. Three more barracks starting as well. Plus two as well as plus one armor now on the way. This has been a really passive game. Almost like this ain't Beyond because Beyond is a player that loves being aggressive no matter what he's playing against. He could be playing against a two base all in. He's moving across the map. But now against the Phoenix Colossus opener, he really hasn't done much of anything. Really hasn't. Fifth base on the way. Now starts going out on the map. Phoenix is getting locked onto by a Cyclone. We'll lose one Phoenix. I think that's the second Phoenix that he has lost already. Now Beyond's going to walk into a pretty sizable army and should send in the, the, the left side army immediately to try and go for a base raid. Indeed, here we go. Violence being taken out. 
This means that Hero's move out now is not necessarily all in, but it does feel fairly dedicated. Okay, recall does get utilized here, and I think that might have been the correct call. A little bit of a boost back here with the Metafax. One Ghost in a tiny tad of trouble. Tried to go for an EMP instead will die without having done anything in his life. Sad. Fifth base finishes up here for Bianas. Hero expands towards the top side. Wants to play the far right side of the map. That is interesting. Not something you see a whole lot. Usually we see Protoss kind of expand towards these bases. Easy to keep small. Easy to, 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 to wall everything off either with cannons or... Uh, with easy defensive rotations majority of the time this really exposes your left side by quite a bit we have a massive stalker army on the far left side and we have a massive well everything else army on the far right side viking count currently is only at four that means that colossus are going to be powerful double stargates do get constructed there's no ship weapons level one on the way yet though and that means that liberators are very far away from being even remotely useful in this game so far here comes beyond moving forward with his bio army only two medivacs here in general starport unit count is fairly low here for our terran player starport units really are very often the key in this particular matchup we should not forget about that such an important uh thing is that is the starport time and how it is being used Having high medevac counts, having quick high viking counts can be very useful. Here come Liberators, still no sh ship weapons level 1 though, so I'm not quite sure what the plan is with those. It's going to be a forward orbital command rather than a planetary. Tanks will keep beyond save as he keeps part of his army on the left side. This has been the most defensive game I've ever seen between two players who are both known for extreme aggression. This is just... Uh, this isn't camping 101, but it's, it's getting pretty close, you know? Oh, Disruptor's trying to catch. Beyond here says, hey, that's fun. And all with those Disruptors, but I can snipe every single one of them except the last. Misses one Disruptor, just barely. As it died 0.1 seconds after the shot went off. That could have really changed the course of that fight. It would have changed the course of that fight. Those Stalkers would not have been enough uh, dealing with stuff just by themselves. Now, Beyond probably kind of afraid here for a second as Hero's just... I've never seen Hero play as defensive as he is right now. Just almost no aggression from him whatsoever in the first 13 minutes. It's, we now do have a couple of Zealots moving in. Stalkers running around like mad. Turret doesn't quite get sniped. We do get a repair here out of Beyond Sensor Targets rebuild as well. Liberators now sieged up. Do have advanced ballistics. Still no ship weapons coming in. This is... This is very odd. No plus three attack either, despite plus two finishing quite a while ago. It feels like Beyond is playing a pretty poor game here when it, when it comes to upgrading. Just not on top of that whatsoever. Maybe he believed he already had started it? Not quite sure. Cyclone is going to get given up here. Sacrifice to the Protoss gods. This Disruptor Stalker Force, it works in a funny way. Uh, it's, it's, it's really quite vulnerable, but it can be difficult to jump on for beyond. There's just no other splash with this. There's no Colossus to keep this safe. And now all of a sudden, I think this army is in a lot of trouble. I think Recall might need to be used. We do have a pretty big Zealot run by going towards the planetary. That shouldn't do any damage at all. Beyond afraid for some reason here. I think he can just fight this without any issues. EMPs do blanket those Stalkers. This army is, uh, is a little bit in the far red right now. Needs to be careful. Wants to heal it. Probably should send over another medevac there somehow. Medevac count still only at four. That is extremely low. Now a couple of zealots are going to end up showing up here. And that means that this army is either going to die or be forced to pull back. Stalkers being targeted down here. Ghosts do end up falling as the disruptor will definitively push it back. Sixth base now on the way here for Beyond. Well, on the way, it is, it is there already. It has reached its destination. Although, I'm not too sure if the base is too happy with its destination. Because that's very close to a Protoss base. Now, Liberators are sieging up with that advanced ballistics. And this is four, six lips that are out currently. No ship weapon upgrades, though. No ship weapon upgrades. But advanced ballistics are here. Where's the rest of the, of the lips? I don't know. It's a weird position as well to start from, kind of, isn't it? Disruptors moving forward will take a couple of Marauders as a victim of their purification of us. Continued good splits here out of the young. 
making sure that he doesn't lose that march as he's 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 itching to get back on the map and and do something with this marauder force but i honestly think if he just starts a proper assault on this base with what three tanks eight liberators how is hero going to really break this his tempest count is at two currently does not have an oracle for for a revelation vision so this is this is looking very odd it, it feels like both players slow in the transition, slow with the aggression, just playing very careful StarCraft 2. Vehicle plating over ship weapons, are you mad? What? Surely this is a mistake. Ship weapons level 2 is the biggest upgrade that Terran can get in this stage of the game, like 100%. I'm so confused to not see that start immediately. So, uh, Liberators now get uh, chased away by those Tempests. The reason why, by the way, is for the people that don't know, is that with ship weapons level 2, you can one-shot stalkers after you EMP them, and you can two-shot stalkers if you don't manage to get an EMP. Big round of SEVs does get taken now. This one ghost will fall to those purification novas. Vikings now on the way. That makes 11. I'm so surprised to not see double armory either, honestly. Like, vehicle plating and ship weapons should be researched at the moment, not just one. And if it is one, it definitely shouldn't be vehicle plating. We have Cloak on the way here for the Ghost, which could be useful. We usually don't see it used all that much, but maybe now. Maybe today is the day, who knows. Single Tempest is moving forward. There's there's two out there. Where's the second one? Okay, up here. This Tempest does get cleared. Liberator slowly inching forward. We have some turrets in the back as well. Might help if carriers ever show up, but for now, should be fairly useless. Viking count is healthy. Where's the bio army? I guess it's just uh, chilling here on the bottom side. DTs will snipe a refinery, or at least attempt to snipe a refinery. Can we get a repair on that in time? Yes, we definitely can. As uh, another sensor tower here gets constructed, another turret here gets built as well. And the game goes on. Liberator gets sniped. Ship weapons level 2 starts right now, as well as the second armory. So, Ian's still doing what I thought would be correct. He just is it a little bit later than I, you know, than I, I thought was appropriate timing wise. Vikings defending this Liberator. Hero kind of gave up on mining from this base, but uses it more as an outpost. Now, a nuke starts. This goes, uh, it's going to be difficult to touch here. Oh, well, well, never mind. Links into this very nice pickup out of Beyond. That was some beautiful play. Left side bases might become an issue though for Bian at some point. He needs to deal with this somehow, some way. Right now he ain't. Three more Liberators showing up. Getting closer and closer to plus two ship weapons. And that's, that's a very, very impactful uh, like in change in interaction once that plus two finishes up. Five more ghosts on the way. This almost feels like I'm watching Maru play here. But this is Bian. It's just weird because Bian usually doesn't play like this. DTs! Oh my god, just killing themselves here into this army. That was 890T, it's an expensive joke there. Very expensive joke. Oh, oh, no one even left. Lips now moving forward. There's just no bio with this. Ghost will use the nukes. As we're seeing a rotation here coming out of Hero with that main army. Wants to move that. I don't think you can actually break this. No, I, there's no way you can break this. There's absolutely no way you can break. It's not even going to be close, mate. I actually think that Beyond probably should start moving this army onto the onto the map. See if he can do something with it. So it feels like he's well set up. Nuke apparently hit. I'm sorry I missed that. I know how much you all love Nuke. But we have three more Ghost Academies on the way. So we're going to have a couple more attempts here. at probably catching a Nuke at some point during this, uh, <laughs> during this game. Because this isn't ending anytime soon. That much I can tell. Both players playing very passive, very slow StarCraft 2. Methodical. It's been such a such a while since I've seen a game quite like this at the highest level. Usually TVP is is much quicker. It's kind of a refreshing change of pace as uh, this Liberator sieges up into 12 different cannons. We'll get blasted. This lip here gets a couple of kills and now uh, I guess Tempest or a Phoenix. Yeah, it's going to be a Phoenix that will get constructed to deal with that. Liberator's trying to move forward. Perhaps get a kill here on this command center. Could have gotten it if they would have sent all the purification novas there. I don't think PM would have been fast enough with a cancel. Despite this game being calm, there's a lot of angles you need to cover right now as PM. So you're looking at a lot of different things at the same time. That makes up. What is this? Are you serious? 
I've n this I've never seen before. It's like an outpost here with a random nexus. Is it actual box art? Actual box art. For the people that are not aware of what box art is, back in the day when I was a young man, you went into the shop and you'd have to buy a an actual copy of the game and it, it often came in a box and on that box there would be art showing off how epic the game was you know kind of like a trailer but just on paper you know some pictures that's what box art is and it often would show the units you know like you see like a tank and a sensor tower and a bunker that is upgraded you see like a nexus outpost with the batteries and cannons that's something you could see on box art for sure it makes me sad that i feel the need to explain what box art is does not make me feel any younger. But these purification ovas are also not going to make these turrets feel any younger because they just died. This base is toast, but at the same time, beyond also being aggressive, there's a lot of cannons here, though. And, well, they are going to fall, but a single warping will take care of this army. I'm not so afraid of that here. There's so many Vikings, there's just not that many air units. I mean, there's 19 Vikings, there's three Tempest, two Colossus. That's about it, you know? How, how do you want to deal with this if you're Bion? I don't know. Oh. Nuke is being thrown down here. I wonder if it's actually going to land. Purification of us could, of course, hit. But will it? No, it won't. It's nice. Takes out a couple of these. I like it here. I was like, yeah, nuke landed, whatever. This ghost can, you know, can piss up now. I think there's plenty of nukes available, though. Gotta probably send in another one. Do we have any nukes available? Where is that in the unit tab? Yeah, three nukes are available. So that's cool. This guy's gonna get a couple more worker kills and eventually the energy will run out and these stalkers will one-shot it. Beyond continues expanding towards the top side. So uh, resources lost is fairly even. More turrets in production. I wonder what Hero's actual plan is going to be. For now, it's just Mass Stalker Disruptor, which is a fun composition, but against high lip counts can be very frustrating to deal with, especially on a map like Dresden, where aggressive rotations don't tend to be super easy. Good target fire on that lip, we'll get it taken out. And now this base should honestly be toast. I wouldn't even mind if the young just decides to kind of give it up for now and say, hey, we'll come back another day. That, that would be viable, but not what he does he wants to save it and he wants to save it real bad at the same time tempest colossus immortal three adepts two disruptors and two sentries show up to a command center and it sounds like that's a joke but the command center is forced to leave the orbital command is forced to leave we have adept harassment as well. i've never seen this this late into the game this cc is gonna die a little bit sloppy out of beyond sending it back too fast at the same time stalkers are breaking through over here there's only four liberators left at this point and I'm feeling like Beyond might be in a tiny tad of trouble. Way too many Vikings in his army, which aren't really being useful at all right now. We do get some good splits. Oh, two more Marauders do go down. This purification of gets a Marauder and a Marine. There's just so many disruptors that I don't see a way for Beyond to ever really get to this army. Like, he'll constantly be splitting away. And then by the time he's done splitting... The first disruptors that fired will have new purification novas again because the cooldown ain't that long. Four more cannons on the way, so it's three more batteries. We have two lips coming out, five marauders, six marines, vehicle plating, all of that good jazz, yada yada yada. And now we have more lips pushing forward. It's gonna bring the total up to six. At least over here on the bottom side. There's ten total, so that means there's four somewhere else. This is a powerful push. It does... Oh my god, you can't be serious, Hero. You can't lose all of those disruptors for free. Well, it's not going to be free. It's the final purification over against like eight ghosts all at once. At the same time, Vikings are being completely wrecked over here. That might trigger, yep, Colossus production immediately. And now I think BioLib Medivac is going to be the way to play here for Beyond. Still has a lot of orbitals, so if he can ever take a base, he can immediately start mining a lot of cash from it because he has how many? 10 freaking orbital commands, most of them with full energy as well. That means infinite amount of scans, but also infinite mules. Also means that he could get a way lower SEV count. I don't understand why we're reproducing workers here. I don't understand that you only need workers for gas mining. 
all the other mining can simply be done with the help of mules. That way you can get a bigger army. Now Stalkers once again moving forward. Big blink in. Targets down these two Liberators for now. More lips are showing up. Disruptors to help zone out this army. So that a chase is going to be practically impossible. This is going to get blasted here by the low ground force. More and more Liberators are being built. Going up to 16 right now. More Marauders as well coming in. And honestly... Losing all those Vikings obviously sucked for Bion. It cost him a lot of resources. But at the same time, in a way, I think Hero actually did him a favor. Because for the first time in quite a while, now Bion has a massive freaking army. And this is an army that is difficult to contend with. Oh my god, Bion is jumping on top of this. Taking out a lot of these Disruptor splits. Once again, are going to be good. One more Disruptor does get sniped. This was a fight that Hero was not happy with. Uh, disruptor count has been pretty much reset back to one. So these lips are now being chased away by carriers, but that does reveal the fact that carriers are out. I wonder how Bion will respond to this. Is it going to be Vikings? Is it going to be more ghosts? Is it going to be just mass, mass liberator? What are your plans here, my friend? Tell me about it. Mules have landed. Here comes Hero. But here are a lot of liberators as well. I'm not so sure if they siege up in time, though. I think they barely might have just... As uh, Zealots are starting to fall at a very high pace. Hero still with a lot of cash in the bank, though. Does not quite have the carrier count that you need. The carriers are very good in high numbers. They're not as great in medium numbers. Because Bio can just survive for long enough in that case. There's not a real threat. And if Liberators siege up on a base and carriers start fighting you, probably not the end of the world. Here comes the siege up. Here comes the siege up. That's a lot of Liberators. That is 19 Liberators. Not all of them are here, of course, but there's 19 Lips total on the map. We have six Vikings as well that are being built. Four are out already. It's going to bring the total up to 10. I think that might just be enough to deal with this army. I prefer Beyond's army at this point, except that the Ghost count is too low. If there were more Ghosts in this army, I would love this army. For now, I just simply prefer it. Carriers can't even shoot here because the Interceptors will just get one-shot by all the Liberators, I'm pretty sure. Liberators continue pushing forward. Vikings will take a bit of a beating here. Gas count low for both players. Gas going to be the real issue here. We'd love to see some new refineries go down up top. Yep, there we go. Bion realizes that starts it. These lips are just zoning out in this position. There's no real vision on top of this ramp. I'm surprised how ballsy Hero is by sometimes just moving up like he does. The thing for, for Bion here as well is though, is that he needs to keep in mind that this top side right now has been mined already. So if he wants to deny bases, this needs to be the bottom side. Like he needs to kind of isolate that bottom side. Splits are okay-ish. Loses one ghost, couple of marines. What's that, what's that recall? Is that a phoenix? I think it might be a phoenix. Oh, it's just the entire army. They just didn't... Really? You recalled the entire army? Kind of a wild move because... I don't think Beyond is quite aware of this right now. He's scanning. Now he sees it. He's like, uh-oh. He's got to start rotating back down here. Liberators. No, actually, Beyond says, let's base trade. Beyond says, let's base trade. But no, let's not base trade. I'm going to go back. Maybe. Do I want to? I have no clue. I don't actually know what the correct call is here either. Uh, Purification Nova is being sent in for. This is an army that I don't think Hero can really afford to lose. He just has one recall. He doesn't have a mothership or anything. That means he's now backed into a corner. If Bion plays this out carefully and kind of slow in a way, that might be the best way. Because uh, Liberators can continuously siege up forward. There's 10 lips somewhere. I don't know where they are. We only have three in this fight. Vikings going ham. Hero seems to be temporarily winning this fight. But in the end, this is going to get cleaned up 100%. And then the question is, will Bion have the, the money to reproduce? I think the answer is no. Hero doesn't have the gas necessarily to reproduce, but he has so many minerals and he has some time that I, I, I think it will be fine. I mean, he's still mining from, it could be mining from six gases here. Could be mining from eight gases, actually. Ten! Okay, he's, he's, he's gonna be—he's mining from eight already. He could be mining from ten. So he has loads of gas income. I wasn't quite aware of that. Has this bottom base and could just mass warp in zealots if he wants to as well to win some time to buy some time. Yes, the army of Bion is very, very fierce. It's very scary, but actually, it's eighteen Vikings. Is it really that scary? No, it's not. This was an army designed to kill the Protoss air army and. 
it did do its job, but right now we're in a situation where, where Bion is just down. Bion is just down, and that's the reality of things here. Vikings are going to land. Oh, he's down bad as well. I'm surprised how little warpings we're seeing. Okay, 10 more zealots coming in right now. I'm gonna bring the total of these zealots. What is that? Like up to 17 down here. Yeah, 17 zealots. Ooh, purification nova gets sent in. That's a kill. Just any kill is a good kill right now, except for Vikings. Although, you might as well kill them, right? If you're around, why not? See if he can hit one. No, he can't. There we go. One more Viking does get blasted. We have one purification nova remaining. I think Bion is very keen to jump on this army. I think it's the only thing he can do. These zealots now uh, starting to ravage the main base. And Purification Nova's coming in. I think this might actually just be it. Because Beyond just doesn't have the forces to defend this Orbital Command. He's forced to defend this Orbital Command. Because it's one of his last remaining bases. The main base now is being completely destroyed here as well. And... Ay, 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 ay. This is just so sad to watch. I think Beyond has died. Beyond has died for sure. GG gets called. And that means that Hero wins the map here on the grass run well done to hero fun little game this is it is very odd to see these two players play such a passive game because neither player usually does that it could be that both players were thinking well let me take the you know catch the other one off guard by playing real passive today <laughs> that's gonna get him and then they just play a, a massive macro game which i guess was kind of interesting i'm glad i witnessed it i hope you liked it as well if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see all of you next time for a new video bye bye